Y Richard Branson también ha dicho palabra a la Nación de Reunión, a la Nación Unida, caminando como orador. Él ha dicho el tema de importancia de PPPs y sostenibilidad de vida marina. Richard Branson ha sostenido que quiere que tenga posibilidad grande de desarrollo de vida marina y en los océanos, pero cada uno me está aportando a eso aquí. This is exactly why we founded the Carbon War Room five years ago. And we've been working in the Caribbean through the Ten Island Challenge towards an effort to unlock opportunities to scale renewable energy projects across the Caribbean. And we're so thankful to have had the key support of the wonderful Dutch Postcode Lottery as a founding partner. Uh, the Postcode Lottery is a great Dutch invention and one of the most powerful public good organizations in the world. Well, together with leaders like Prime Minister Eamon, uh, we are supporting efforts to transition from fossil fuels to a renewable energy mix, creating a blueprint for other island nations. The aspect of this is a different threat, but sustainability is not impossible. Islands face increasing challenges from their dependence on imported fossil fuels, which impacts the prices the public pay for everything from electricity to food. More broadly, the past 150 years of global industrialization built on fossil fuels have also fundamentally begun to change the ocean, making it more acidic, driving sea level rise, and making it less hospitable to marine life. The most important thing about this is that it is not the most important thing about it. But the ocean has got an incredible The ocean has got an incredible ability to regenerate, to build and to restore itself over and over. Unfortunately, that ability to do so is being compromised. And so, as well as working as hard as possible to reduce CO2 emissions, we all have to act as quickly as possible to help the ocean become more resilient. We need to stop stripping the ocean of all the fish we can grab. And we need to start thinking about where, how, and what purpose that fishing is taking place. We need to start protecting very large ecosystems and habitats to enable marine wildlife to rebuild and to thrive, to build resilience, to change, as the Dutch government has begun to do in parts of the Caribbean. We need to stop using as many plastics and where it's unavoidable, ensure they are collected, reused, recycled, and don't end up in waterways in the ocean. And finally, we need to reduce pollution runoff from agricultural and other activities on land before it literally suffocates our reefs and life in the ocean. Más importante ainda, está con la logra de Saki. How can we do some of these things? Well, for instance, retailers should take responsibility for the chain of custody of the fish and seafood they sell. That means knowing where the fish is caught, which ports it has been through, and ensuring that international labor standards are upheld. To be responsible also means not sourcing or selling endangered or vulnerable species and not facilitating their trade. Recent studies estimate that at least 100 million sharks are caught and killed each and every year, mostly for their fins, for, for, for soup in unregulated or illegal fisheries. And sadly, there are some countries that even legally allow the catching of sharks and the finning. And as sadly, what's happening now is that our beautiful rays are now being uh, uh, caught en masse all over the world for so-called medicinal purposes. Well, our airline Virgin Atlantic, along with uh, many other airlines, will not transport shark or ray products. And I encourage other carriers to adopt the same policy. And in the Caribbean, one of the most important things we could do is to declare a region-wide shark sanctuary to protect those magnificent creatures which drive tourism to our shores and keep our reefs healthy. Según Branson, says Ms. Ferta, leader in conservation of the ocean, tanto para lo que tiene dignos agua como para lo que tiene para fodigente.